Hey everyone, so today I'm talking about the Canon RF 16mm f2.8 STM lens and right now this is Canon's second cheapest lens and by far its cheapest option for an ultra wide lens. And really this could be an absolute dream for anyone looking for an ultra wide vlogging lens, maybe an ultra wide landscape lens or an ultra wide video solution, really any ultra wide solution. But Keep in mind, this is obviously a budget lens and an ultra wide optic can be pretty complicated to design and produce. So there's definitely going to be some compromises here in the design and quality. So today I'm gonna to look at what are the pros and cons and the strengths and weaknesses of this lens as well as who it might be right for. All right, so first let's talk about the build quality of this lens and this lens along with the RF 50 millimeter f1.8 is the smallest lens available for the RF mount. Both of these two lenses, the 50 and the 16 millimeter have the exact same housing and it's a durable plastic construction, really the same construction that all of the RF lenses have had so far, but it does have a metal lens mount and that's definitely gonna help with durability when you're taking the lens on and off of the camera, but it does not have any weather sealing. There's no lens hood included with this lens. It is again, an RF mount lens, so that means it's only going to work with Canon's full frame mirrorless cameras. Right now, that's the RP, the R, the R5, R6, R3, and then also the C70 RF mount cinema camera. And this lens has only one ring on it and only one switch, and that switch controls whether that ring is going to function as the custom control ring, which allows you to map a setting, ISO or shutter speed or aperture or a lot of different options to that ring, or you can switch it to be the focus ring. Now, the problem that I have with this one ring setup is that you don't have a way to switch it automatically into manual focus on the lens. In order to do manual focus, you have to switch the lens to focus and then go into your camera menu settings and switch to manual focus in the menu. And that that's pretty slow and time consuming. And if you are switching back and forth between autofocus and manual focus kind of often, it can be pretty frustrating. But I will say that this lens design does pair really well with these smaller, lighter mirrorless bodies to make a great compact setup. So photography with this lens, and I will say ultra wide is very niche and 16 millimeters on full frame just isn't super versatile. Now, it is great for getting a lot or basically all of your environment in the shot. It does have about 108 degree field of view, but if you're not shooting outdoors in a super open space, it can be really hard to compose your shots. It's hard to kind of choose what you keep out of your frame because it's just all going to be in there. Now, bokeh is pretty interesting here with this lens because ultra wide is not known at all for having very much compression. You don't get shallow depth of field very often with that. And also f2.8 is not super fast for a prime lens. Now I will say, again, this ultra wide optic is more difficult and more expensive to design than something like a 35 or a 50 millimeter. So I do think that f2.8 at 16 millimeters for this price is reasonably fast but I was not expecting to be able to get very much shallow depth of field. However, I will say that when you have your subject close up, you do get a decent amount of bokeh in the background and it's not the best if you are just looking for a bokeh monster lens. This is definitely not going to be what you're gonna reach for. But I think, again, considering that we're ultra wide at this price point, it does, at least as well as you can expect. And that shallow depth of field you're going to get primarily when you're shooting pretty close to your subject and have it separated away from your background. And the close focusing distance on this is not bad for what it is. It's about 0.43 feet or 0.13 meters. And that's only about 0.26 times magnification. So it's definitely not a macro lens, but again, this is an ultra wide lens and if you're getting up close in that close focusing distance range with this lens, again, you will be able to throw the background out of focus 
as you get further and further back from your subject and your subject aligns more with your background, you're gonna get less and less of that blurry background effect. But again, that's exactly what you would expect with an ultra wide optic like this. Now, as far as image quality goes, it's mostly what you would expect here from a budget ultra wide lens. In the center, it is nice and sharp. That sharpness falls off as you go out to the edges, but that's really not a big deal with an optic like this because you really should not be composing your shots with your subject out in the corners of an ultra wide lens. As you go out away from the center, the distortion on any ultra wide optic is going to be more and more pronounced. So I don't think it's a huge deal that the corners are less sharp than the center. And while we're on the subject of distortion, let's talk about lens correction profiles. And with this lens, Canon will not allow you to turn the lens corrections off in camera, which is a good thing because this lens definitely needs those lens corrections. But that only applies to when you're shooting in JPEG as far as photos go. And the problem right now is that Lightroom and other editing softwares don't have the lens correction profiles for this lens yet. Now, typically that doesn't last too long before those lens correction profiles come out, anywhere from a few weeks to a couple months. But with these cheaper lenses, so for instance, the RF 50 millimeter F1.8 came out last year and it took almost a year for those lens correction profiles to come out in Adobe Lightroom. They are here now for the 50 millimeter, but again, that took almost a year. And if it takes this long with the 16 millimeter a year to get those lens correction profiles, that could be an issue for anyone trying to shoot with this 16 millimeter within that next year, because this lens does need a lot of correction. When it's uncorrected, you get some super pronounced distortion and it actually does not even cover the full sensor width. So out in the corners, you can tell that this is, even though it's advertised as a rectilinear lens, it's really actually acting optically almost like a fisheye lens. You aren't getting your corners covered by the lens. With the lens correcting profile, it straightens that out and your corners are covered. But again, if you're shooting raw and then taking that into Lightroom, those correction profiles aren't there yet. Hopefully it will be soon, but if the RF 50 millimeter F1.8 is kind of the example that we can expect from how long it takes Adobe to bring out these correction profiles for cheaper lenses, that's going to be pretty difficult. Now, I will say that, again, keeping in mind that you're gonna have some extra pronounced distortion, which is relatively normal from an ultra wide lens like this, that might not be a deal breaker. You can crop in on the image a little bit and make sure that your corners are out of the image. And then the image can be pretty usable. But for these tests, after I looked at the first couple raw photos, I did start shooting in raw plus JPEG so that I could show you guys the difference between what it looks like with the lens correction and without the lens correction. Autofocus performance here was good. I didn't have any issues with it. It was fast, it was accurate. There was no slow focus hunting at any point or anything like that. Color reproduction I think is really good, definitely on par with the lenses that we've seen from the RF mount at this kind of lower budget price point. Sharpness with this lens, again, it's really good in the center, even wide open, but it does fall off towards the edges. So I think for most people that's gonna probably be more than fine, but it's definitely not a lens that's designed for you brick wall shooters out there. But for the price and considering the size that this lens comes in, I think this is a great option for a budget compact ultra wide lens. It is good quality, but not perfect as a budget option. And I think it checks off what most people were wanting from this lens. I think it is a solid, but definitely not perfect budget ultra ultra wide lens. I will say though that if these lens correction profiles don't come out soon, that is going to be a bigger deal than with some of the other lenses like the 50 millimeter f1.8. And that could potentially be a reason to hold off on purchasing this lens if you are going to be shooting stuff in RAW. So when it comes to video, and I think a lot of people were really excited about this lens for video because I think it is an interesting option for things like vlogging or filming yourself in any way and things like action sports, but do keep in mind that an ultra wide lens, it can distort your subject really 
quickly, especially the closer you get to the subject. So if you're not aware of that ultra wide distortion, your subject can end up looking like some kind of alien fish pretty easily. But it is a really great way for vlogging or something to get a nice environmental shot without having to hold your arm super far away. It's also small and light. So I do think it is a pretty cool option for something like vlogging. But a few things to keep in mind there is that first of all, this lens does not have any built in optical image stabilization and because it's an ultra wide, the ultra wide lenses don't play very well with the IBIS for the R5 and R6 and R3. You can get really nasty jello effects with ultra wide lenses on those. So I definitely would turn the IBIS off if you're trying to film handheld with this lens in one of those cameras. But I will say that at an ultra wide focal length like this, the micro jitters, they really aren't as prominent as if you were a little bit more zoomed in. So you'll probably be fine in a lot of situations, even without having image stabilization here. I will say that one option is to use this lens paired with the R or the RP that don't have the in-body image stabilization, but do have the digital image stabilization options. And that digital image stabilization on the R and the RP actually works pretty well with this lens. So that actually might be one of the better options here. Image quality with this lens is again, what you would expect from a budget ultra wide lens. We do have good sharpness in the center that falls off pretty quickly as you go out towards the edges. I will say with filming video with this lens, you're not going to have to worry about the lens not covering the entire sensor because when you're filming video, that's a 16 by nine or smaller cutout of a two by three sensor. So your lens is going to cover the full width of your video sensor. We also have good color reproduction on this lens. So overall, I would say it's not necessarily the best video lens and ultra wide is again, pretty niche anyway. So it's kind of a question of, do you need an ultra wide lens for video? And I will say that for vlogging and trying to stay on a budget, this probably is the best option for Canon shooters right now. Though again, there's no optical image stabilization in the lens and it doesn't pair well with the in-body image stabilization that we have on some of the newer cameras. But at the size and the price, it is going to be a lens that is probably a good idea for people that just want to have a small and cheap lens that's not gonna eat up a bunch of budget and also not gonna take up a bunch of space in the camera bag to get those really cool environmental shots when you need it and just have for a just in case we want this ultra wide shot lens. So who is this lens for? And I think with it being at the smallest RF lens size available, it is still an interesting option if you're shooting street or travel or landscape and you're trying to stay on a budget and also keep a small footprint. Now with the lack of controls on this lens, it's not the most versatile for someone who is switching back and forth between autofocus and manual focus relatively frequently. I do think that despite the image stabilization issues, this is the best and definitely most interesting option for vloggers on a budget. And it's not a lens that's going to be for the pro photographer looking for the best ultra wide image quality, but at this price point, that was never the expectation for this lens. So I do still think that it is a really cool and interesting option to have as a lens for someone who doesn't shoot ultra wide very often, but wants to without spending a lot of money and without taking up a lot of space in their camera bag, have that just in case lens for when you wanna get a really cool establishing shot or just wanna capture a whole lot of environment for a certain shot. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button in the comments below, let me know what you think about this lens. Were you expecting more? Did it meet your expectations? Are you excited about this lens? Have you tried it out yet? Are you looking to try it out? If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, then hit the bell icon so that you can get notified of all the new videos that I post here on this channel. If you are interested in getting this lens or any of the other gear that I've talked about in this video, I will have affiliate links in the description below. If you click and buy through those links at no extra cost to you, you'll help support this channel so that I can continue making videos for you guys. Thanks. See ya.